number one, Joe Biden um, continued signing executive orders yesterday. He signed, I think, what is it? I think he's up to 5,000 executive orders so far. Just He wakes up in the morning and whatever thought he happens to think that day, he'll convert it into an executive order. I think he'll be signing an executive order today to declare that chipmunks are the cutest forest animals. It, anything at all, any thought he happens to think, let's make it into an executive order. Uh, but remember, of course, Trump was the, the, the dictator and the fascist. Um, Biden will beat Trump's executive order total in like a few months. That's, that's, that's the rate he's on now. Um, and so on that end, yesterday he signed, he signed a racial equity executive order. And of course, he tied it to George Floyd. Here he is explaining why he's uh, signing the order. What, Mary, what many Americans didn't see or had simply refused to see couldn't be ignored any longer. Those uh, eight minutes and 46 seconds that took George Floyd's life open the eyes of millions of Americans and millions of people around all over the world. It was the knee on the neck of justice, and it wouldn't be forgotten. It stirred the conscience and of tens of millions of Americans. And in my view, it marked a turning point in this country's attitude toward racial justice. Yeah, eye-opening moment. I, you know, I thought it was pretty eye-opening when we got the toxicology report back. And uh, we were told that he had lethal levels of fentanyl in his system. I thought that was pretty eye-opening, too. Um, that, 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 to me, was pretty enlightening as well. Now, Joe Biden also, uh, we, we talked last week about the 1776 commission uh, that President Trump formed. And they released their report, which we, we went through a little bit of it. Uh, worth reading, except that you can't read it because one of the first things that Biden did when he took office is he, he deleted it. He took it down. And uh, now he announced part of this part of this racial equity plan is to do away with the 1776 commission. Here he is explaining that. Look, in the weeks ahead, I'll be uh, reaffirming the federal government's commitment to diversity, equity and inclusion and accessibility, building on the work we started in the Obama Biden administration. That's why. I'm rescinding the previous administration's harmful ban on diversity and sensitivity training and abolish the offensive counterfactual 1776 commission. Unity and healing must begin with understanding and truth, not ignorance and lies. Today, I'm also issuing an executive order that will ultimately end the Justice Department's use of private prisons, private prisons an industry that houses pre-trial detainees and, detainees and federal prisoners. The executive order directs the attorney general to decline to renew contracts with privately operated criminal facilities, a step we started to take at the end of the Obama administration and was reversed under the previous administration. Yeah, so he talks about their abolishing the, uh, the 1776 commission you know, and he, he also says he also says it's it's count, counterfactual is the 70s. What part of it is counterfactual? The, the, the report lays out basic facts of American history. And as soon as it was released, we were told by the media and the left that oh, it's, a, it's an assault on truth and on this is not history at all. What, what part of it isn't history? You know, they, they never explained that, did they? They never told us exactly what part of it is false. Of course, the, the only part that they really, the, the, the primary part that they disagree with is just the point that the 1776 Commission made, which is that slavery, an awful, evil thing, nobody, den- literally nobody, at least nobody in the West denies it. Um, some parts of the world where they still have slavery, maybe they do deny it, but certainly in the West, nobody denies that. But it's also not a, a, a crime or a, a sin uh, unique to Western society. The white man didn't invent slavery. And that does matter. You know, that matters because when we're going back and we're looking at our um, the, the heroes of our history, we have to understand them within context. And if there's a certain evil thing that someone in history uh, took part in or at least did not object to. And then you, and then you, and then you take, and then you take a step back and you take a wider view of it. And you see that pretty much everyone in history up until that point also was not objecting to it. 
then yeah, that that matters not. I don't know how many times I have to explain this. That matters not in judging the objective um, morality of the act itself. Now we know that slavery is a horrible evil. Always has been. Always will be. And you can make statements like that when you believe in objective morality. The, the irony here is that the left, they're moral relativists. So they have even less standing to judge anyone 200 years ago who practiced slavery or believed in it. Because according to them, morality is relative. And 200 years ago, 250 years ago, 300 years ago, all throughout history, the, the, the relative morality of that time was that slavery was okay. And if you're a moral relativist, you have no basis upon which to criticize that. Now, if you believe in objective morality, as I do, then I can say 250 years ago, if you practice slavery or, or, uh, or even failed to protest against it, then that is an evil act. But when judging the moral culpability of any individual who engaged in it, that's when you have to take into account context, the context of the time. Um, and that's the difference. But again, as a moral relativist, that is the, just the, the incredible irony here. It's the moral relativists who are the ones going back through history and holding, you know, our historical figures to the standards of today. I think that's stupid to do on any philosophical grounds. You especially can't do it as a relativist. Makes no sense. All right, one other clip I wanted to play because because uh, Biden has one other thing to say here that I thought was 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 interesting, but not for the reason he intended. Let's take a listen. We have never fully lived up to the founding principles of this nation. State the obvious: that all people are created equal and have a right to be treated equally throughout their lives. And it's time to act now, not only because it's the right thing to do, but because if we do, we'll all be better off for it. For too long, we've allowed a narrow, cramped view of the promise of this nation to fester. You know, we've, uh, we've bought the view that America is a zero-sum game in many cases. If you succeed, I fail. If you get ahead, I fall behind. If you get the job, I lose mine. Maybe worst of all, if I hold you down, I lift myself up. Yeah, I actually agree with him there. I agree with, with what he just said. Um, but I don't think he understands what he's saying. And I think that's a problem that's only going to get worse as time goes on. But he's saying we've, we've bought this incorrect view that America is a, is a zero-sum game. And you know, if I succeed, it means you fail. You're right. That is, that is an incorrect view. It is a view that a lot of people have bought into. It is wrong. We do need to push back against it. But that's the view that is being propagated by your side, dude. That's, that's you. That's you and your side. That's what you're saying. We here over here as conservatives, we, be, we have been the ones saying what you just said. That that's not the way it works. That's why you don't have to look with resentment on someone who's wealthy and successful. Just because someone's wealthy and successful, it doesn't mean they're taking something away from you. You don't have to take from, from someone in order for other people to be successful. If you want to help the less successful be more successful, it doesn't mean you have to take away from the ones who are successful. Because it's not a zero-sum game. That is an incorrect view. But again, Biden, it's your view. Not ours. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.